Hey guys, EST here with a very important video. I just turned my non-battery backup sump pump into a battery backup one without having to buy another one. And I wanted to point out something very ironic. Even they themselves agree that I bought the wrong one. And by I, I mean the previous owners of the house. And what's that say in the bottom there? Consider a Pro Series battery backup sump pump system. Now nowhere on here can you hook up a battery backup. So what I assume they mean is you bought the wrong one, we're ashamed of selling this, your basement's gonna flood if the power goes out. And they are 100% correct, so I did it myself. Now here's the thing, I, my initial plan was, okay, well there's a big honking transform in there to run the big 1400 watt pump, and let's just measure what voltage DC it is and see if I can replicate it with a battery. So I could just take a hard line from a battery and just jam it in there and just manually run the pump for like 60 seconds in case the power goes out. Just straight to like one to two to three car batteries or a lithium pack. Well, that's where we have a problem. This doesn't work that way. That is an AC line that goes to the apparently AC powered motor that runs the pump. I don't even get how AC motors work. Feel free to not explain it in the comment section. So yes, not all motors are DC. I mean, you're, you're probably used to, okay, AC is transmission. Then anytime you want to do work, you drop it to DC with a transformer, even in like a blender, a toaster or anything. Um, so yeah, that right there is an AC motor. So this right here is a float a uh, signaler thing. So there's a little floaty thing and when it gets to a certain level, boom, it trips it. And it completes the circuit, tells this to run power to there. It's just a glorified switch. And then this uh, sends AC power through to the motor, which will pump the water out until the float gets down to a certain level and then kills the circuit. Real simple. So there's nothing to kind of hijack, like put a, oh, just put a 24 volt line down there and run it to the pump and the pump will turn on. No, you'd probably blow it up because it's an AC motor. So there is absolutely no way to put a DC battery into this without replacing it, really. You just simply have to replace it with one that runs on a DC pump and doesn't use an inversion system. Or you could just add an inversion system like I just did. It's kind of expensive, but I mean, a battery backup sump pump, what are they, like two, three, four hundred bucks, I think? I think I looked at them a long time ago. They aren't cheap, but the system I just put in is uh, for sure under 200. You can get away even cheaper if you did it the way I did. So let's take a look at that. So what we've got right here is a deep cycle marine battery. It's a lead acid battery. It weighs about 60 pounds at least. And uh, it outputs 12 volts DC, about 12.7 actually. Uh, it's labeled for, I think, like 800 cold cranking amps, which, uh, you know, times 12 volts is several thousand watts that it can output so continuous output is not an issue um capacity i had trouble finding it i think it's about 24 to 40 amp hours ish so if you're drawing you know 100 amps from it uh 20 30 40 amp hours is gonna go pretty quick but that pump tends to run for i don't know 10 seconds and maybe like once every I don't know, 15 minutes 30 minutes hour Depends if it's raining, of course. So this battery should be able to run it for a while. Would I have preferred lithium? Yes, but I just couldn't get my lithium 18650 supercell together in time. And we almost had another flooding event. Well, we lost power for two minutes and that was about a minute and a half of me panicking. So I was like, nah, we fixing this today. So we've got a battery cutoff switch where if I uh, unscrew this and pull it, boom, this actually just comes out. So that I got just as a quick disconnect to, to not have constant load on the battery. Uh, but then I thought, well, I'm going to put a float charger on it anyway, so I'll explain that later. But for now, okay, that's the battery. That's a 12-volt source. I put a cute little voltmeter on here, a little, little $3 eBay voltmeter. There we go, 12.6 volts. You can see uh, during my testing, I drove it down 0.1 volt because it really doesn't have that much capacity. But I bet this could run the pump for about a day or two total, which may be the duration of, of the rainstorm. I know um, usually two days after the rain stops, this thing's still running, but... Uh, you know, how long could the power really be out? And in two days, let alone, you know, two hours, I would hook up another battery to it, you know, put a parallel 12 volt source on it, go grab the battery out of my car, double the capacity of this. Yeah, I would do something. But for now, I just hardwired positive to there, negative to there. And those are just some cables I had laying around. Uh, you could put the inverter pretty close. So uh, what you want to buy is like, Eh, eight gauge, four gauge. I mean, that's like a foot um, welding cable at your local hardware store and just get it custom cut if it's like mine and uh, get yourself some nice little ends. Those are about two bucks a piece. And then it's usually about one to two dollars per foot for the cable. So practically nothing. Uh, the battery itself is about 79 bucks. So we'll just say 80. Now a good deep cycle marine battery, like a really good high capacity, well-made one is usually well over a hundred dollars. They're quite expensive, but uh, I thought, well, I'm not actually putting this on a boat or in an RV. I'm not actually hooking this up to like a solar array, so 
it doesn't need to be that fancy, and I think that's why it's not quite as high capacity as it could be. And why the manufacturer's website wouldn't tell me the capacity either. So, back to float chargers. So, there's a little teeny tiny 12-volt source where you can put it, you know, right to the outlet, right above it, right there. And you just hook it up to the battery terminals, and it runs like... Oh, probably not even one amp, probably a good fraction of an amp. So it doesn't quite run 12 volts constantly to the battery. It constantly senses the voltage, and if it dips down below a certain level, then it'll real quick fill it up so that your uh, battery doesn't just sit there and lose electricity, which it can. I, I don't remember. It's like if you set it on concrete, it'll drain it because concrete has like a polarity. or so. It's something weird, but basically they just tend to drain themselves for no good reason. And last thing you want is a flat battery a year from now when the power goes out because you never checked on it. Also, if I left that voltmeter just attached to it, it would probably empty the battery in like three days. I mean, I'm sure it doesn't draw that much, but it's like eh, constant, you know, hour after hour. So what you can do is you, you put the float charger on there. It's maybe 0.1 amps at 12 volts, and it'll just slowly, slowly charge it if it dips down low so you'll always have it topped up so part number two you're probably wondering what these go to well obviously an inverter so one thing you never want to get is a those will push a pump uh, or any kind of electric motor too hard overheat it break it overdraw the inverter it just it won't work it's not safe and it won't work and if it does work you will blow up the motor in your sump pump. So get a modified sine wave or a true sine wave inverter, preferably a true sine wave. This one's a modified one. I got it actually kind of for free, but if I were to buy this brand new, I think it's under a hundred, which is impressive because it's a 1500 watt one. Uh, it was at Harbor Freight. Jupiter isn't like the best brand, but okay. I mean, if you were to get like the premier 2000 watt true sine wave inverter it's about 160 bucks and we're talking like an energy one like top of the line absolute certified tested you know 10 year warranty or whatever they give on that like premier inverter um but if you were to go like super ghetto who cares chinese no name brand ebay wonder and then also used or like you know hit up craigslist facebook marketplace something like that um yeah, this, or pawn shop especially, I've seen these at pawn shops. You can go into the low, like, 40, 50, 60 range. I mean, I've seen these at rummage sales for 25. That's insane. But within reason, I think you could say, okay, 50, 60, use batteries, I wouldn't recommend it. The float charger, the cabling, all that stuff, let's put together, batteries about 100, we'll say. And that's, you know, almost everything retail, like I said. So maybe 150 to, like, 250 absolute tops, if you were to really do it right is the total expense of this entire system. So, with the float charger on there, I have a theory that under normal circumstances, I could just take that straight off the wall and put it straight into the inverter and just run it that way forever. And just the battery will keep topped up. And if the sump pump runs every 30 minutes, in the 30 minutes, the float charger will actually charge the battery. Um, you're gonna wear out your battery, that's for sure. You're gonna wear out the fans in your inverter, although this one doesn't turn on until it gets hot. You might even wear out the float charger, honestly. It's not great, but it's like automatic battery backup if you're not home. What I would do is rush home, or if there's bad weather, then plug it into the inverter. Don't just leave it that way for just random rainstorms, because it's just overstressing the equipment. Now, I would test it once in a while. You know, you don't want the first time to find out that there's a problem with it or a blown fuse or something like that to be during a rainstorm. That would be bad. Oh, and that occurs to me. I should show you just how that connects right there. A um, little bit oversized rings. I actually didn't do that cable. It came with the system. I got this off a company that was just kind of getting rid of it. It's my brother's company. It's the whole thing. I'm going to tidy this up. And honestly, I'm going to try to get a new inverter because let me show you the footage from the test and what happened. This better be enough water. I can't imagine that it wouldn't be. There we go. Uh-oh. Well, I mean, I know this inverter doesn't like around 10.7 uh, volts, but that only dipped to 11.7, but it made the alarm go off, but it continued to cycle, and it's still at 12.5. So, like I thought, I think this is, it's aged a little bit. It's like, uh, you're kind of getting up there in the 1500 watt range, but it did still operate. So, ideally, if I were to, you know, just buy an inverter to do this, it would be 2,000 watts, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I reshot this entire video because of the background noise of those fans. It was terrible. Also, I didn't like my uh, narration. So it did work 
but just barely. And I know that at about uh, the pump is rated for 1440 watts draw, and that inverter is rated for 1500 watts total output with a quarter second spike to double that. And that's just purely capacitors in there and, you know, other stuff. So did it start to overdraw the battery? Absolutely not. The battery can do like five to 7,000 watts. So it's not even close. Unless they're drastically lying about their cold cranking amps. But, I mean, at 12 volts, it's pulling like 100 amps. If it doesn't do 100 amps, that thing wouldn't even start a car. But would I feel a lot more comfortable at, at a 2,000 watt inverter? Yes. And 2,000 replicates basically an outlet a standard American outlet in an average house, I think, is about 1,800 watts, somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, that's the most you can pull through it before you pop a breaker. So if you want to, you know, replicate that and then some, don't go 1,500, go, you know, full-blown 2,000. Because then you just don't have to care. And then if you're going to, you know, really do it, then, you know, get a true sine wave one. Why not? Unless you're trying to save money. I mean, you either just do it ghetto and get it done, and there you go, I'm safe. Or you, like, super do it the right way. And then also, I should mention, then you have a system. And you've basically got half of a solar system. You get a charge controller and a solar panel and you've got a power wall. You know, there you go. A really crappy one with almost no capacity. Might want to get like a row of batteries. And then in that case, don't go lead acid, go, you know, lithium, especially lithium iron phosphate. But, you know, we're getting into a different video. But basically, let's say my power is out and also I want to... I don't know, run my radio because I neglected to put batteries in it. So I want to run a weather radio. I could plug that right into that inverter into one of the other sockets down there and run it. And there you go. And I'm running off of, you know, off the grid power. Um, I probably wouldn't do that because I'd want all of the power to go to my uh, sump pump because that's more important. But, you know, eh, maybe a weather radio would be considered important. So if you're wondering how I determine the wattage, it says right there, 12 amps maximum. I thought, oh, it's nowhere near 12. No, it turns out it pretty much is 12. Um, I don't know if it shifts gear or something. You heard that that alarm didn't go off until, uh, you know, the end of the draw there. But this is the Pro Series with the Deluxe Float Controller. Then the reminder that you bought the wrong one. <laughs> it's at StopFlooding.com. Well, stop selling people the wrong one. How about that? I mean, that isn't the only boneheaded move that the people who lived here before me made. But they were renting the place, so it's like, okay. And the landlord hired some quality contractors for the plumbing and electrical, I'll tell you that. But, uh... Basically, 120 volts AC at the wall, 12 amps, 1,440 watts. You multiply it, real simple. So this 1,500 watt inverter, which is a bit cheaper than a 2,000 watt inverter, would this be appropriate if you've got a 1,200 watt pump? Absolutely it would. So in the winter, your basement's obviously not going to flood, but then you have this. So it's, it, it does more than just one thing. You know, if you're saying, I'm not going to dump $200 into just protecting my house from one specific thing, but you've now got a power source, a very high-end power source, and you can sell most of the equipment for close to what you paid for it. So that's uh, about it. If you have any other questions, let me know. I know quite a bit about electrical stuff, and I've still got some really, really cool projects coming out later this week on this channel, hopefully. So subscribe if you don't want to miss that. Check out my other existing stuff. Like, uh, But in the meantime, I've got some other really cool content on this channel, like uh, how to turn your car into a mid- to long-term generator in case of uh, an ongoing power outage. That was a pretty good one. But any other questions, leave them down in the comment section below. I will try to answer them as quickly as possible. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next video.